<clears throat> okay, brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to share this. I believe this is going to happen. We're very close to this from happening. God's going to pour his judgment upon this world. And it's primarily for the nation of Israel. Okay? Now, before that could have happened, because if you're a student of history, you would have realized that the Jews were cast to the four corners of the earth. They were destroyed. Many of them died, but God reserved some of them. Some of them survived and so on. For those of you that know about Hitler and all that. But Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD when Titus, the Roman general, attacked the temple and destroyed the temple. He did not leave one stone left upon another and Jerusalem was totally destroyed. So you would have thought that how in the world can these events that are described in the book of Revelation and the stuff that Paul said about the Antichrist defiling it, how in the world can that happen if it's destroyed? Well, remember, God said what he said and he meant what he said. He said what he meant and he meant what he said. Right now, the Jews are back in the land. That happened May 14th, 1948. But they're still in unbelief. So God's going to bring his wrath upon the nation of Israel and that's how they're going to come back to him. He's going to purify them. Because they're in unbelief, they're not going to go unpunished. That's the very purpose for the time of Jacob's trouble. Because Israel is in unbelief. It has nothing to do with the church. Don't let anybody fool you and say, we have to go through the tribulation to purify ourselves and stuff like that. When it has nothing to do with the church. And I'm going to show you that straight from scripture right now. But right here, Jeremiah chapter 30 the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Thus speak the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write in a book for yourself all the words that I have spoken to you. For behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will bring back from captivity my people Israel and Judea, says the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers and they shall possess it now these are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judea for thus says the Lord we have heard a voice of trembling of fear and not of peace ask now and see whether a man is ever in labor with child so why do I see every man with his hands on his thighs like a woman in labor and all faces turn pale. Alice, for that day is great, so that none is like it, and is the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. You realize Jacob's name was changed to Israel in Second Kings chapter 17, verse 34. It is the time of Jacob's trouble, because Israel is still in unbelief. So God's going to pour out his wrath upon the nation of Israel. Now, this is very powerful right here, what it says here. I'll start from verse 6. This is God speaking. Okay? I have cut off nations. Their fortresses are devastated. I have made their streets desolate, with none passing by. Their cities are destroyed. There is no one to inhabit. I said, surely you will fear me. You will receive instructions, so that her dwelling would not be cut off. Despise everything for which I punish her. But they rose early and corrupted all their deeds. And then, my dimish is to gather the nations. There's another part here. Or was it verse? But well, it's all through here. But the Jews will turn to him. The king of Israel is your midst. Yeah, in that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear. Zion, let your let your hands be weak. The Lord your God in your midst, a mighty one, will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness, and he will. Behold, at that time I will deal with all who afflict you. I will save the land, and gather those who were driven out. But there's another part. If you go to chapter one, this is the day of the Lord right here chapter 1 verse 14 the great day of the Lord is near it is near and heavens quickly 
the noise of the day of the Lord is bitter. There's a mighty man shall cry out. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of devastation and delus delusion, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet and alarm against the four-fifth cities and against the high towers. I will bring distress upon man and they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like riffin. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoted, devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he will make speedily reduced of all those who dwell in the land. So it's the day of the Lord. You see that? The great day of the Lord is near. Now, let's go to Isaiah chapter 13. The book of Isaiah chapter 13. Verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord comes cruel with both wrath and fierce anger. And it goes on. I will punish the world for its evil and the, wick and the wicked for their iniquity. And look at this part here. Therefore I will shake the heavens. Therefore I will shake the earth. Yeah, and the earth will be moved out of her place. So the earth will be moved out of her place. It even says in the book of Haggai that I will, yeah, I will shake right here. Haggai chapter 2. I will, verse, 20, verse 21. I will shake heaven and earth. I will overthrow the thrones, kingdoms. I will destroy the strength of the Gentile kingdoms. God's going to shake this, the heavens and the earth. So, go to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now the day of the Lord is, is the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Remember that. But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then... Sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. The Antichrist is going to sign a peace treaty. They're going to say, world utopia is here, our world peace is here. And when they say that, peace and safety, boom. God's judgment is going to hit them. But Paul is encouraging them, if you continue reading down. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to attain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that rather we awake or sleep, we shall live together with him. So you see, for God has not appointed us to wrath. In the day of the Lord, that's why he says, we're not sons of darkness. We're not going to be here for this. That's why he says, for God has not appointed us to wrath. And in 1 Thessalonians, chapter 1, from 9 to 10, For they themselves declared concerning us, What matter of entry we had to you, and how you turned, to, turned from idols to serve the true and the living God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, who he raised from the dead, even Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. Jesus is going to deliver us. You see this down all the way, down through Scripture. Okay? Whenever God dealt with a certain country or nation 
before he poured out his wrath. He always pulled his out before. Okay? In Sodom and Gomorrah, he took out Lot. Before he judged uh, the world, he took out Enoch. Enoch was taken before the flood. Elijah was taken before God judged the nation of Israel. Lot and his family was taken out before God rained down fire. But because the whole world is going to be under judgment, God's going to take us out of this world. That's why there has to be evacuation, which will be the rapture of the church. We are not appointed to wrath. That's what people need to understand. That the tribulation is a time of God's wrath and judgment. Like we just read. It's a time of wrath. And if you go to Ephesians chapter 5, this is what it says. I'll start from verse 6. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Upon the sons of disobedience. You see that? And if you go to Romans chapter 1, go to the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness unrighteousness of man who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. It's all through scripture. God has never once poured out his wrath upon the wicked with the righteous. He's always pulled his out on. That's why the rapture was a mystery before the apostle Paul came. Jesus talked about it but he didn't really describe it in great detail. Like in John chapter 14, where he said, In my Father's house are many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you so. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, so that where I am, there you also may be. I will come and receive you unto myself. Okay? Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the second coming. All of that is talking about the second coming. And there's no mystery there at all. The apostles, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Why, it was a mystery until Paul came. And God revealed it to him. And then in Ephesians chapter 1, from 9 to 10, it says, Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he published in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. And if you go to Romans 11 as well, Romans chapter 11, verse 25, For I, not, for I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened, to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in and so all Israel will be saved as it is written you see God is dealing right now with the body of Christ the church he's left Israel aside for now until the time of Jacob's trouble arises and then he's gonna pour out his wrath upon them so once that last Gentile believer is saved we're out of here to the clear when the fullness comes in God knows the last person that's going to join the church, that's going to come in and become a Gentile believer and become the body of Christ, we're out of here. And then he's going to focus his attention back on Israel. And then he's going to go back. The next dispensation is going to come in where it's going to go back as it was into Old Testament times. The Jews are going to be rebuilding their third temple in Jerusalem. The two prophets will be there. And they're going to go back to the to their traditions and customs. That's why you go back to the calendar. It's all focused on Israel. It's clear. <clears throat> and yet, <clears throat> the Jews require a sign. Yeah, if, you, if you ask any Orthodox Jew today, if they believe in the New Testament, they'll tell you no. So God's going to be confirming signs to them during the tribulation for seven years of signs, proving his existence to them. He's going to confirm to them the book of Revelation. And they're going to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, go to Revelation chapter 5. 
No, Revelation chapter 4, sorry. But before I get there, I want to get into this. Okay. Look at James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. To those who love him. You're going to get a crown of life. And then if you go to uh, Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness. You see, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Who have loved his appearing. And then Romans chapter, let me read it quickly. Romans chapter 8, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation. Okay? There's a big difference between believers being persecuted and suffering God's wrath. We have never have and we never will. He took care of that at the cross and we are saved. This time is specifically for Israel. Okay? Now, go to Revelation chapter 4. I want to explain something here and show you. Okay, let's start Revelation chapter 4, verse 4. Okay? Around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the throne I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. Remember, he that endures temptation shall have the crown of life. And what Paul said, for all those that love his appearing, you'll get the crown of life. So it says clearly, right here, around the throne, 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, sitting, clothed in white robes. So we have white robes on, and th they had crowns of gold on their head. Yeah, but how do you know that wasn't just talking about the Apostle Paul? Well, let's go back and see what Paul said. Okay? Let's go back and see what he said about that. If he was just talking about himself. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, so not just to him, but also to all, see that word all, all who have loved his appearing. So right here in Revelation chapter 4 is clear. We have we're in white garments. Let me read that again. Verse right here. 24 clothed in white robes. So we have white robes and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And then continue reading. What does it say? Let me start from Yeah, verse 10. The 24 elders fell down before him who sits on the throne and worshiped him who lives forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Remember we sing that song? We lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. We fall down, and we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. Now let's continue reading chapter 5 here. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a squirrel written inside and on the back sat on the throne yeah on the back sealed with seven seals okay these are the seven seal judgments of God then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the squirrel and to loose its seals and no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the squirrel or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the squirrel or to look at it. 
But one of the elders, huh, this is speaking about us, one of the elders, because we are crowned, said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loosen its seven seals. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the squirrel out of the right hand of him who sits on the throne. Now when he had taken the squirrel, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp, yeah, a harp and golden bowls full of the incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. So we're singing the song, right? How, where, why are we singing the song from what? Well, let's read it. Let's start again from verse 7. Then he came and took the, the squirrel out of the right hand of him who sits on the throne. Now when he had taken the squirrel, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb, each having the harp and golden, golden bowls full of the incense which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, this is the song that we sang. You are worthy to take the squirrel and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us. You have redeemed and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And have made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. We shall reign on the earth. This is clearly talking to the church here in chapter 4. We have all nationalities in the church who have redeemed us out of every tribe, tongue, the languages, and peoples, and nations, and made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth, talking about the thousand-year reign. And that goes on. Then I looked, and I heard of the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and a number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power, riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. So it's clear. And then if you go to Revelation chapter 6, what does it say? Now I saw when the Lamb, he's finally opening the seal. Now when I, now I saw the, when the Lamb opened one of the Seals, I heard one of the four living creatures saying, one of the four living creatures, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, come and see. And I looked and behold a white horse, he who sat on it had a bull, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. So that's the Antichrist. So it's clear from scripture that we are in heaven, because we had white garments, and crowns of gold. Remember Paul said the righteous judge will give to me on that day. So we're there. And it says clearly that we were praising. Saying that he's worthy to open the squirrel. Which shows that we're in heaven way before the Antichrist is unleashed on the earth. Because the Antichrist is a judgment on the earth. And yet verse 15 says the great man. Look the kings of the earth. The great man. The rich man. The commanders. The mighty man. Every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand so it shows you clearly revelation chapter 6 is judgment being poured out jesus is pouring out the seals which shows that the wrath and judgment of god is being poured on the earth way before the seven trumpets, which clearly shows the wrath of God is being poured out here. And we're not appointed unto wrath, and it's the great day of His wrath, which means we can't be there because we're not appointed to it, and it shows that we're not there in Revelation 4. Because look, one of them was crying. Look, verse 3, And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth 
was able to open the scroll or to, or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open the red, open and read the scroll and to look at it, worthy to look at it. But one of the, but one of the elders said to me, "Do not weep." One of the elders, and we saw the elders are crowned and everything. It's talking about us. Because look, go to Revelation chapter seven. Many people try to say this is the church when it's not the church. Okay, Revelation chapter seven, uh, verse. Yeah, I'll start from verse nine. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues standing before the throne. So now they're in heaven. And before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and the elders and the four living creatures fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. It doesn't mention that these people, look, it doesn't mention them having crowns or anything. The big difference here. They're not the same group here. From Revelation chapter 4. Let me read that again. After these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes with palm branches. They have palm branches. We don't. We had crowns of gold. And they don't have crowns. Because the crowns are particularly for the church. This is a different body here. This is not the body of Christ. There's two bodies in the tribulation. The tribulation saints and the Jews. <clears throat> so he asks them, you know, in verse 13. What does it say in verse 13? Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these in, in white robes? And where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said, to me, these are the ones who have come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. The sun not strike them nor any heat. It's totally a different group of people here. Don't let anybody fool you and tell you that you have to be found worthy to go through the tribulation. You have to prepare yourself. You need to get righteous through suffering. That's not what my Bible tells me. My Bible tells me that we are saved from the wrath of God. And there's only one thing that makes you pure, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't let anybody fool you of that, trying to rob you of your crown and your joy and your peace and the blessed hope. Don't listen to these people. They're false. They're false teachers, okay? Now, I want to check something here. Revelation chapter 6. <coughs> Get under the altar. Souls of those who had been slain for the... Held, and they had with the voice. How long, O oh Lord? Can we end? Avenge your blood on those who dwell on the earth. Yeah. Totally. Look at this. I'm closing with this. Even the mark, like right here, it shows you that they don't have any crowns. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each of them, just a white robe that they got. And it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were also complete.
And even if you go to Matthew, chapter 25, verse 31, the judgment of the nations, there's no crowns mentioned there either. You see? But well, we're in heaven, okay? We're getting prepared for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Because I believe according to Scripture, the marriage supper of the Lamb is going to take place on earth. Because his guests are going to be invited. So we're preparing ourselves up there, getting judged, and we're getting ready of what, what our, our, uh, our tastic will be during the millennium, what we'll be doing. And so that's how we're getting prepared in heaven. So the Bible is clear. We have crowns. Don't let anybody fool you. You didn't see Revelation chapter 7, the tribulation saints with crowns, and the judgment of the nations, you don't see them with crowns. Because it's for the church. That rapture was primarily a promise that God gave through the Apostle Paul for the church. Don't let anybody rob you from your crowns, okay? Because these people, these post-tribulationists, are thieves and robbers, okay? They're stealing all the promises that God made to the Jews. And they're trying to steal it all from them. But they can't. Just stand on the word. What they're teaching is anti-biblical, anti-scripture. That's the teaching of Catholicism and Mormonism. That we need to go through the tribulation, which is a lie from the pit of hell. You'll never find this in your King James Bible. It teaches very, the very opposite of that. We are saved from the wrath of God. Remember that. That's all i got to say. I'm letting you guys go from here. And God bless. And have a great day. And this is what I want to say. The judgment of God is about to fall. No joke. Because in each dispensation shows it always ended in judgment. When a nation and a city continues sinning perpetually, God's wrath falls. And the whole world is doing that right now. That's why we're about to get out of here. So brothers and sisters, be ready. We're leaving this planet very soon. When that last soul is saved, we're out of here. God bless.